Let's begin by singing Holy, Holy, Holy as Abel. I invite everyone to stand. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray. Our Father, we, we begin this time with acknowledging you. We thank you that you have promised to be with us as you were with your precious daughter, Machin. Thank you for, for life We thank you for your blessing, and we look to you this afternoon for your presence and for your comfort for those of us gathered here and especially for the family. In this time of difficulty and confusion, we are grateful that we have much to give thanks for, but our hearts Our hearts are sad. We are grieving by this great loss. And so we do look to you that you would guide us in this time, that you would help bring to remembrance a a wonderful and precious life, and that you would show all of us, and especially the family, how to take the next steps that are needed at this time for a day like today and for the days ahead. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're here today to honor and celebrate the life of Maching Pan. And while it is It's a very sad occasion. It's good to see so many of you here. And you're here to support the family. 
A special welcome to those who are watching online, whether you're doing so right now or later. I've only gotten to know Maching in, in more recent time, but it didn't take me too long to see how precious she, she is to so many. Both the songs and the scriptures uh, that will be read and sung this afternoon were chosen by the family. And at this time, i like to ask uh, Dora and Nelson to come and read the scriptures. And then following that, we'll go into the next hymn. The first reading comes from the book of Psalm. Uh, this is a special reading, um, especially because it was the psalm that my mom had used uh, in her annual letter, if you ever received them, uh, and she used it uh, the year she was diagnosed with cancer. So it's kind of special for us. Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, Though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy habitations of the Most High, God is the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utter his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The word of the Lord. The second reading comes from John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here ends the reading. Let's stand again to sing. Thank you. 
It's a real blessing to have um, Marianne Foley and her brother Peter. You know, they're very special, longtime friends of the congregation. I'm just getting to know them, and um, already I could see how special they are and grateful that they could come and uh, bless us with music this afternoon. At this time, um, Hong Mao is going to come to do the eulogy. He's going to be sharing with us in Chinese, and his daughter Mary will be translating for those of us who need it. That will be followed by tributes by both Mary and her sister Dora, and that will be followed by a video tribute by one of Maching's former students, and she'll introduce herself in the video. So invite the family to come up. Hello, Hello, I'm Ma Qing's husband, Hong Mao. Thank you all for coming here today. Ma Qing, we are back at the church finally after a whole year. It's a beautiful sunny day. You must be happy. Chin 甚至能闻到香气出现他的那个笑容38 years ago, when we first met at Hangzhou Foreign Language School. We were both young teachers back then. The year I met Ma Qing, I was in depression and deep pain. My heart was in the darkness. I listened in during foreign language classes every day back then, and she taught English. I was sitting in the last row of the classroom when a beautiful young lady arrived at the teaching podium. Her smile was so refreshing and pure, like a flower that has just bloomed, that you could even smell its fragrance. That smile, when we first met, has been fixed in my mind since. Her smile was gentle and kind, like a beam of light illuminating me. Since that moment, I have been chasing that light. 我们就一直在这个幸福当中当时在外国语学校有许多其他的和我同龄的青年
绵绵不绝的青山，他也许下了决心，一定要把阳光照耀到我身上，驱散我的阴影。We were happy and confident in every decision we made. We made the best decisions for our life together. I still remember I told her once that we would live forever until we are 200 years old. She didn't believe me, <laughs> but I foolishly believed it with a strong conviction. I think my conviction came from the gift that was Ma Qing's light. I asked her, there were many eligible young men around us back then. Why did you choose me? She replied and said she didn't know. <laughs> My guess is that my sadness at the time evoked her sympathy and endless kindness, that perhaps she was determined to grace me with her sunshine and dispel my shadows. Two年前的八月份,马青去杭州看望他的父母时,突然开始头痛,昏迷,进了急诊室后来, 很快就做了开颅手术。我从渥太华赶到杭州时，刚做完手术的马青迷迷糊糊，有点醒了，见到我时含着笑。之后从重症监护室搬到了普通病房，他完全清醒了。看着墙上挂着的钟，他分别用中文、英文、法文说：“现在是几点了 ？”What time is it？ 然后他说：“你看，我还能用三种语言说话，我的语言能力没丢失，我的大脑完好无损，这是上帝给予我的一个奇迹啊！我们要祷告，你们都要帮我祷告，感谢上帝。” Two years ago in August, Ma Qing went to Hangzhou to visit her parents, and suddenly started to have headaches and nausea. She had a brain surgery soon after going to the ER. When I rushed to Hangzhou from Ottawa, Ma Qing had just woken up after her surgery, still dazed. She smiled when she saw me. After that, she moved from the intensive care unit to the general ward and became completely lucid. Looking at the clock on the wall, she said in Chinese, English, and French, what time is it? Gelle had deal. She then exclaimed, look, I can still speak in three languages. My language ability has not been lost and my brain is still perfectly functional. This is a miracle God created through me. We should pray. You should all pray for me and thank the Lord. In the next two years, no matter who she met, family and friends, old and new, Ma Qing said that God is creating miracle on her. In the two years, she prayed every morning and every night, not only for herself, but for our family, for our friends and acquaintances, for what was happening all over the world, for peace, illnesses, and conflicts of the world. In Chiquahuachangsumachingzuihuichanda 我知道上帝会怜悯我们，让我们能有缘团聚。
During the last days and nights I spent with Ma Ching, during the dozens before she had left, left this world, I was by her side. I said to her again and again, God is with you. You love the Lord so much, and he loves you so much. I am certain that God will bring me to you one day. On the way to the crematorium before Ma Ching's cremation, I suddenly wavered. I was very scared that I might never see Ma Ching again. Thinking about that brought tears to my eyes, but I am still choosing to pray to God. I know that the Lord will show mercy on me and give us the opportunity to join once again. Ma 从不贪求更多。他的生命告诉了我力量来自于阳光、善意以及感恩。A A few days ago, my daughters asked what the Qing in Ma Qing's name meant. Qing means the color green in Chinese. According to Ma Qing's mother, when Ma Qing was born, her parents wanted her to become resilient like the green grass. Indeed, Ma Qing was like the green grass that faces the sun early in the morning, embracing the sun, nature, and life. Ma Qing always had confidence in the kindness of people. She was always grateful for everything in her life, even if what she had was modest. She was never greedy for more. Her life showed me that true strength comes from optimism, kindness, and gratitude. 我们的家就像一个小世界，最早只有我们两人，然后有四人，现在有六人了。马青，你的丈夫深爱你，女儿、女婿也深爱你，我知道你深深爱着我们。马青，我美丽的妻子，上帝的孩子，安息吧。our family is like a little universe. At first, there were just the two of us, then four, and now six of us. Ma Qing, your husband loves you deeply. Your daughters and son-in-laws love you deeply, and we know that you love us deeply. Ma Qing, my beautiful wife, child of God, rest in peace. God is with you. I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> Good afternoon. I don't think I know everyone here. Um, so I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Mary. I'm the younger twin. <laughs> Many of you know my mom to be a very gentle woman with a very serious demeanor, but she can be hilarious. When we first came to Canada and met all of you, quite a few of you, many of you didn't know how to pronounce her name. She never took any offense, but found it to be a source of joy. She said, look, Everyone is calling me McKing and McQueen. I feel like royalty. <laughs> she lost some of her humor and confidence after her diagnosis, but never her joy. I will never forget her genuine joy when she saw us after her first surgery, when we made it home to Canada after a long journey through an air ambulance, when her pet quails were incubated when friends visited her, and when we dreamed about our future together. Some of you might know that before the misfortunes of the last month, my parents were planning to move to Stittsville with um, 
kind of with our help and became, become our next door neighbors. We dreamed about decorating the house together with blue and gray, her favorite colors, sitting in the backyard together, eating meals outside, watching the birds, and creating a hobby room where we could solve jigsaw puzzles together. When we spoke about that, her eyes twinkled like the stars. I celebrate my mom's life today, but of course I'm also grieving. I grieve that she won't be able to celebrate with us when we have exciting news. I grieve that she won't be able to have the chicken noodle soup I promised her when she was first admitted to the hospital. I grieve that she won't be here to watch the backyard birds, the sunsets, and the night sky with us. I grieve that she won't be here for birthdays, anniversaries, and New Year's to come. I grieve for all the tomorrows we had planned and pictured. My mom always faced challenges with a sort of quiet conviction and strength. I saw her strength when she taught herself how to play the piano when Dora and I took lessons as kids. I saw her strength when she took care of our family, worked full time, and still went for her master's degree. I saw her strength when she committed to starting anew by moving our family to Canada and giving us a better life. And two years ago, when my mom was diagnosed with glioblastoma, a cancer so aggressive that doctors called the Terminator, she still somehow found the same quiet strength to keep living to the best she could. And although cancer took my mom way too soon, she was only 58, her quiet strength lives on. It will always, always stay with me. When my mom left this world, I was there in the hospital room with my husband. My dad had just left the hospital to get some rest and I was sharing a happy story with my husband. My mom had been sleeping for almost the whole day. When we noticed that she was gone, my heart sent for her. I wasn't sad. It felt like I could see her soul rising, and I was fortunate to be sending her off. For what felt to me like quite a while, all the beeping and bustling of the hospital disappeared, and nothing else mattered. I was, and I am, truly happy because she was finally free from the sufferings of this world. I take comfort in knowing that my mom's life, despite being short, was a remarkable one. I take comfort in knowing that she is joining many loved ones on the other side, and all of you today here. Your presence provides me joy and comfort since it's really clear that she was loved by you all. And I'm grateful to have each of you here today. Mama, I love you. I will miss you. Until we meet again, rest well. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Dora, the older twin, I guess. <laughs> um, so my heart is still full of sorrows and my mind is still occupied by feelings of guilt, regret, and all the should have, could have, would have. So I'm afraid that I don't yet have the strength encouraging me to face the reality with complete joy. What I can do now today is to share some of her happier memories with you all. My mother was a storyteller. She loved to tell tales of her childhood in the town of Xiaoshan, where she was born, stories of her in Minnesota as an exchange teacher when she was much younger, before she had us, stories of me and Mary as kids, her travels, and all the cute, heartwarming episodes from her school. As her child, those stories are not just stories, but a way for me to connect with the world 
and make sense of it. And now I take refuge and solace in those stories. Her childhood memories are like a film set with an idyllic backdrop. The 60s in China was the peak of the Cultural Revolution. And my mother and her sisters were all sent to remote farming villages to learn from farmers at one point. My mom recounted in vivid details how she and her half-sister harvested apples together when she was no more than four. Her half-sister would climb the trees and shake the branches to make the apples fall, while my mom would sit on the meadow under the tree and place the apples in the basket, doing the easy job, eating a couple as they worked. Not long before she was hospitalized in July this year, I asked my mom what the most memorable event during her childhood was. She recalled how excited she was the day her sister was born, when her father came home with both her mother and the newborn baby on the back of his bicycle. Pretty, pretty interesting, I think. I don't think that's gonna happen anytime today. <laughs> I grew up listening to these stories and I feel an odd nostalgia for that era as my memories intertwine with hers. Over the years, we have gone on many family trips, but only a few after Mary and I became adults. What I treasure the most on these trips are not the adventures and misadventures on the road, which there are a lot, but the quiet moments where we would do nothing in particular. Laid back, perhaps chatting about the sunset or birds by the campfire, perhaps just reading our own books. There was a calmness that radiated from her, and my highly anxious mind basked in her presence and would slow down in those moments. As a teacher myself today, I felt both admiration and envy whenever my mother talked about the children that adored her and she adored. She had that caring, nurturing nature that I feel I could never possess. So naturally good at guiding students to reach their potentials and so gracefully talented when communicating with them. She lovingly referred to her students as my kids. I remember joking with Mary once, why is mom telling us about her kids? I thought we are her kids. She had so much love for all her kids. Eventually, I started to say my kids in the same manner when I started teaching myself. Although she is no longer with us, she will forever be my guiding light. I am so grateful for all that she had done for our family and for me personally. I hope that wherever she is now, she will be happy knowing that she has left a legacy and touched many people's lives in an extraordinary way. Uh, if you have any stories or memories about my mother, please do share them with us during the reception, after the service, or privately anytime. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. For those who don't know me, my name is Alice and I'm Martin's student 37 years ago. Yes, 37 years, when I was in grade six and she was a fresh grad from university. Martin was kind, gentle, and loving. She gave us such patience and care that made enormous impact on her students' lives. At that time, she was the prettiest female teacher in our middle school and her charisma won her immense popularity among the students. Every girl secretly imitates her graceful manners and her way of speech, and every boy models his dream girl after her. I was fortunate enough to have a long-lasting friendship with Martine, and she has taught me not only English, 
but influenced me in many aspects. Looking back, my memories with her are twinned with her sincere smile, her passion for life, her love of nature, and her true artistic talents. After she was diagnosed with cancer, she demonstrated such courage and resilience that I couldn't help but be impressed by her optimism for life. Martin's beauty lies not only in her appearance, but in her soul. As it is put in the movie Coco, the real death is that no one in the world remembers you. Martin will live in the heart of everyone who knows her, respects her, and loves her. Martin, I will always miss you. But with so many wonderful memories of you, I can always think of you with a smile. Your optimism towards life will always be my lifelong aspiration. Goodbye, and see you down the road. Let's stand to sing Greatest Life Faithful. Thank you so much for those blessed words that I think I could speak for all of us have really touched our hearts. Uh, the, the beauty of your wife and your mother that shone through what you shared um, and the honesty with which you shared it, um, was, it certainly touched me. 
Um, as you know, I've only got to know her in, in very recent years, but I, um, I'm really glad that I caught the smile. That there's something about, there's something about the Ching smile that's very, very special. I had the great privilege of visiting the Ching in the hospital a few times before she passed. I was delighted that she knew who I was, even with my wearing of face mask and gown. I would pray with her one time along with her, and I read scripture to her, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 46 that Dora read for us earlier. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way. And Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. For those not familiar with the God of the Bible, such words must sound strange, bizarre in fact, confident in the midst of trouble that God will enlighten our way and rescue us, knowing that God is present with us when the ground beneath us collapses, not fearing anything bad even in the face of death. To be honest, if we think about them, these words often sound strange to the churchgoer as well. Words like these are spoken on a regular basis. We read them, we pray them, we sing them. But then, something happens and that which we've heard and said and sung may not be as real to us as we may have assumed they would be. We're terrified of what may be lurking in the dark. Will my foundation that I thought was so strong, hold me up? Will God protect me in death? Perhaps I'm alone after all. It's not surprising that these words from the Psalms sound strange to many in our world today. After all, to most, God is an old-fashioned concept, a product of folklore from a pre-modern time. Gods were mythical creations of a much less intelligent people, who didn't have scientific explanations for everything, or almost everything. People are generally convinced there are no invisible forces among us, God or otherwise. We're alone. It's up to us to take care of ourselves. Whatever our view of spiritual matters, most of us, most of the time, do a pretty good job taking care of ourselves, protecting ourselves from the dangers of life. Most of the time, we take life for granted. Perhaps that's been somewhat less true for the past over a year and a half with COVID. But it's times like these, when we're confronted by how fragile life really is, that's when we discover, despite all of our advancements in science and technology, we're not as strong and capable as we think we are. And it's times like these that we are reminded how precious life really is. That our connections with one another are an essential aspect of being human, but then how do we cope when our connections are broken? Sentiments about God are nice, but is he real? Is he real to the extent that his presence would make a difference in the midst of our greatest difficulties? As people here this afternoon, of those who have had to listen to me the past almost three years know, if they've been listening, one of the things that I deeply appreciate about the Bible is how real its characters are. They're not supermen and women, always bursting with faith, impervious to trouble and pain. Far from it. Their courage is exhibited through honest struggles with doubt, fear, and suffering as they hopefully discover that they aren't alone in the universe. Something that Maching discovered. Genuine faith in God isn't about checking off a box. It isn't the result of going to church or engaging in religious rituals. It's about an encounter with the creator of the universe who has made himself known in Jesus, who is willing to take on himself all that's wrong with the world, including death. More than that, in one of history's most unusual but reliable twists, he came back to life so that all who entrust themselves to him 
may also have hope beyond the grave. As I stood by Maching's hospital bed in the shadow of death, I read to her words of light, of confidence, and of hope, not to preach to her, not to try to convince her of something, not to spout sweet sentiments, but to stand with her in complete weakness and remind her of what she had come to know was true. She was not alone. God was with her. God would always be with her. As I mentioned, I got to know Maching fairly recently, and it was after her initial encounter with cancer that when I got to know her better, I'd seen her, but hadn't really gotten to know her. As COVID restrictions forced us to take things online, Maching signed up for whatever I was offering, whether it was a 10-week seminar or a 20-week course. But where I truly started to get to know her was during a 12-week Bible study that began a year ago this month. The study was designed to be interactive. It was expected that everyone was to share their thoughts, something that not everyone is comfortable with. But she signed up and regularly contributed. And as she did, I could see that something had happened to her, that her understanding of the reality of God had become very personal to her. I was so intrigued by her that I asked her if she would let me do a video interview that I could share with our church community and potentially with the world over YouTube. She agreed, though doing something like this didn't seem to be in her comfort zone. Still, she did a great job. I didn't know her life story until then. And so as we went along in the interview, I saw that she was someone who had been part of church life for a considerable amount of time but without personally grasping the reality of what she had regularly heard and sang about until her bout with cancer in China. So near the end of the interview, I asked her a question along the lines of, what would you say, Maching, to someone who has gone to church for a long time, but perhaps the life that you discovered in Jesus has never been real to them? I'm, I'm not going to tell you what she said. She will tell you herself. God is, is good all the time. It's, it's that we, we need to stop sometimes and think. Yeah, we need to look back at our life and then count all the blessings God has done in our lives. Do not get too busy with everyday life. You know, God provides so I think if you start to make effort to read the scriptures and to, to think and to talk to God every day, and then you will get to know him and you think he is real. He is really real. Yeah. Yeah. So please join with me, let's stand again, and we'll sing in Christ alone.
Please be seated. If anyone wants to see the complete interview that I did with Maching, you can search YouTube for Interview with Maching Pan, or you can let me know and I can send you the link. Everyone is invited to meet with the family outside after the service. Coffee and tea will be available until about 4 p.m. Please be mindful not to share cups and utensils and to remain physically distanced. Um, outside of your household groups, of course. Max, masks need to be worn outside if physical distancing can't be maintained. Feel free to use the garden area, the grassy area outside here, and don't forget to throw out your cups before leaving. And by the way, um, while you feel free to, sh of course, share uh, memories and thoughts uh, with the family during this time, you can also do so and share thoughts and photos on the special website that was set up that I imagine most of you know about. After the closing prayer, we are asking everyone to remain seated as the family leaves. Anyone with mobility issues, we are asking you to please stay in your seat until everyone else departs. The rest of you will be released one row at a time, beginning from the back. So first the family, then every, most others, you'll be released a row at a time, beginning at the back, and then if you have uh, mobility issues, you will be helped out following that. When it's your turn to leave the sanctuary, please move quickly through the narthex and don't stop to chat until you are outside. Thank you everyone for coming. On behalf of the family, I'm sure I can say it's so greatly appreciated. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for the gift that Maching has been to us and so many others, and especially to her family. Thank you that she has left a lasting legacy, a legacy of love, of creativity, of purity, and a wonderful smile that will be remembered. May you bless her family in this time of grief, Help them to be patient with the unanswered questions. If someone could turn that off, please. Thank you. Help them when, it, when at times the, the sadness is overbearing and walk with them enabling them to put one foot ahead of the other in these days and the days ahead. May you watch over them and comfort them, care for them, and speak to them. May you do the same for whose lives Maching's passing has left an enormous hole 
a hole that really only you could fill. And may you grant that gift, O Lord, and bring healing and comfort and hope to those of us who are left behind. We thank you for the service. Please, please watch over us in our, our time outside. We thank you that we could do this and may you continue to bless the family. We thank you. May the Lord bless, bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his everlasting peace. Amen. Amen.